Amen. Amen. All right, so Amen. we want to uh, finish up uh, on the study we're looking at, the Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. And we want to look at uh, some evidence for the deity of Christ. Amen. And of course, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, we see an account as recorded about the young rich ruler. We talked about that last week. Mm. And he was asking Jesus about the fact of, you know, why he was calling him good. And what, what did we say that the reason was? Anybody recall? Get the question again. The young rich, rich ruler had approached Jesus and called him good teacher. And Jesus asked him, why did he call him good teacher? And I remember what the, the answer to that is. Jesus, um, I, said, oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Jackie. No, no, no. I wasn't even there. I just remember the scripture. Okay. I was going to say, Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's uh, no one good except my father. That yes. Is God. Yeah. yeah. So what did he mean by that? What was what was he trying to get the young Shul to understand? That he's God. Yeah, did, did you understand? Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. So other, otherwise, do you understand what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I just got, yeah. I just read that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. the answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, cause, because you know a lot of times we say things and we don't really always understand what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. and what we're saying and and what Christ was saying to the young man was, if you're saying am I good, then that means mm -hmm. you understand. God, or you just saying to be saying it, you know, uh, and this is why on other occasions we mentioned that Jesus said, well, who do men say that I am? Mm -hmm. People say all kinds of stuff. Right. I really don't understand what's going on. And we pointed out that the disciples who ate with walkers, left with talk with Christ, on many occasions had no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> and he had to uh, give them fur further clarification by telling them parables or just coming right out and telling them what uh, he was talking about. So, uh, Scholars have, uh, we pointed out, have documented over 300 messianic prophecies in the Old Testament, mm. starting with Genesis, going all the way through to Malachi, we was pointing out the that uh, the possibility of someone being able to fulfill that is like ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, but Christ performed genuine miracles, uh, and these miracles, of course, helped to verify his claim uh, of who he was. And all throughout history, God had empowered other people, the apostles being one, uh, many of the Old, Te Old Testament uh, saints uh, were allowed, uh, Moses, for example. Uh, these individuals performed miracles to verify uh, who they were. But while others were performing these miracles, confirming uh, that they were servants of God. Of course, Jesus' miracles were intended to prove that he was in fact, and is in fact, God. So I want to get, someone to get the Gospel of John 10th chapter for me and read verses 37 and 38. Gospel of John 10th chapter, verse 37 through 38. John 10. Mm -hmm. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. Mm -hmm. But if I do, thou you believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Amen. Praise God. So uh, miracles were performed to verify that the person was who they said they were. You know, a lot of people, they claim to be a whole lot of stuff, but they ain't performing no miracles. Uh, you know, so uh, we want to take that, what they're saying, with caution, with a grain of salt. Uh, if, in fact, God has sent you and you're claiming to be something, then we ought to see God working through you. Uh, and as Jesus pointed out, he said, look, if you don't want to accept what I say, then look what I'm doing. Uh, so I want to get the 20th chapter of John and read verses 30 and 31. 20th chapter, 30 and 30, verse 30 and 31. I have it. Mm-hmm. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Amen. Praise God. So uh, the miracles that, that Jesus performed, uh, they were 
enough to give us the evidence needed to verify who he said he, uh, in fact, was and it is. Uh, what's interesting is that the, the Bible says we don't see everything he did. Uh, there was many things he did not recorded, uh, but we have enough information. that So that tells us that we can know that God is. We can know that Christ is, in fact, God. Uh, we can know that the Holy Ghost is, in fact, God. We can know that the Father is, in fact, God, because we have been given enough evidence. We, didn't gotta be, we don't have to be given the whole world. We have enough information and it's, it's uh, intelligible information uh, that we can come to the correct conclusion. And what I like is when Jesus was on the earth, he pointed out, he said, you will have the sick with you always. You will have the poor with you always. Uh, and he didn't heal every single person that existed on the faith of the earth that needed to be healing. He didn't heal every single person he came in contact that needed to be healing. He did what was necessary to demonstrate that he was, in fact, who he was claiming to be. The apostles did not heal everybody that they came in contact with. They did not heal everybody that they saw. They did what was necessary to verify who they were. Now, this is important because today there are people walking around claiming to be certain things, uh, and think, speaking and feeling they can heal, heal anybody under the sun. And they're doing more than Jesus did. They're doing more than the apostles did. Uh, and they're doing things that the Bible is not even advocating, if you will. Uh, so what's, in really, what's important is this stuff was happening to verify who these individuals were. So we didn't sort of take their word for it. Uh, they could demonstrate. So while locked away in prison, John the Baptist, he sent some of his followers to Jesus. And, uh, you know, he was a little concerned. He says, uh, are you the coming one? Are you the one? Or, or, or should we look for another? We see that in Matthew 11, chapter and verse 3. And then Jesus gave him an interesting response. Jesus said, now you go back and you tell John something. You tell John that uh, the blind can see, lame can walk, lepers are being cleansed, deaf can hear. Dead are being raised, poor having the gospel preached to you. That that's uh, through verses four through five of that eleven chapter. Uh, and so when John heard that man, he said, "Oh, okay, all right." You know, in other words, uh, these miracles were evidence, verifying evidence that in fact Jesus Christ was the Messiah, the sent one. So over seven hundred years earlier the prophet Isaiah had predicted that those very things would be accomplished by the Messiah. We know we talked about it faith earlier. We said that faith is evidence-based. And so uh, uh, Messiah, uh, 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 Isaiah had prophesied in the 35th chapter, uh, verses 5 through 6 in chapter 61, verse 1, he had prophesied all these things. Uh, and, of course, John knew that he knew, uh, and uh, so when Jesus comes on the scene, Jesus is letting him know that what Isaiah had prophesied had come to fruition. So John got it; he understood. He said, "Oh, oh, that he's the one. He's the one." So Jesus wasn't just merely uh, saying, uh, "Look at all the wonderful things I've done." What he was saying is, "I'm doing exactly what the coming Messiah is supposed to do." It was prophesied long before I came on the scene. Uh, details were given, uh, and I was able to perform these miracles. That, in fact, verifies I am who I say I am. That John, John had more questions after that one. Uh, and so when, when Peter addresses the very people who have put Jesus to death, he reminded them that Christ's unique identity had been proven by his miracles, by the wonders that he had performed, by the sun, the signs rather, uh, which God had did through him in their very midst. Uh, and we see that in Acts chapter two. Somebody get that for me. Uh, Acts chapter two, and look at verse 22. Get that for me, Acts chapter two, verse 22. Listen to what Peter is saying to these folks that were crucifying the Savior. Glory to God. He crucified him. I have it. Okay, go ahead. X 2, 22. Yes. 
Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, mm. as ye yourselves also know. My Lord Jesus Christ. He, he, what he's saying is, you is no reason why in the world you should have crucified him. He, he had all the evidence was there, all the proof was there. They saw it. It was being verified. It's just, whew. you know, pe you know, many of us like this today. Preacher can preach till he is blue in the face, and we can see the scriptures. We can read the scriptures. We can know what the scripture says, and we still won't do it anyhow. We won't accept it. We won't believe it. We won't do it. And let me give you a classical example. A classical example is a pastor could tell you you need to come to Bible study. The pastor could tell you uh, it's important that you be at Bible study. He could preach that to he's blue in the face. Everybody else sit there and say amen, hallelujah. And then when Bible study comes, you hardly anybody there. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh Lord. So uh we see here this 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 thing. Yes, uh, Sister Sanders. Mm -hmm. I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because <coughs> When it comes to Bible study and especially Sunday school, it's like uh, um, these adults feel like that's not for them. Mm -hmm. I, I've had some to tell me I did that when I was a kid mm. I, or, or I did that, you know, a long time ago as if like now, you know, they don't have to come anymore. And so my, my pastor, he changed the name of it from Sunday school to fulfillment hour. You know, mm. to 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 try to take that edge off that you won't be thinking, you know, that <laughs> traditional Sunday school. You're going, you're coming to fulfillment hour. Amen. You know? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, you know, the next lesson that we're going to get into uh, when we finish this one, the next one to get into, I'm, I'm going to reserve some comments to then about what you just said just now, uh, and it will come into play in the next lesson with great clarity of why it's so important to come to Bible study. And let me just say this uh, also, it's actually a commandment. Uh, you know, the, the Bible tells us that the scripture says, study to show yourself approved of God, a workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, people say, well, I study. Well, that's not all it says. It says that you have to, you have to study rightly dividing. Now, we have to be taught to rightly divide scriptures, so you you could you could you could you could study all you want, but you someone has to show you how to rightly divide. <laughs> Glory to God, uh, you know. So we can't get around this thing of Bible study. Uh, it's very very important, and and uh, there's many many other scriptures we can look at too. But the Bible makes it clear. Jesus said this. He said, "If you love me, you keep my commandments." Now, listen. That means I got to be in the book. Learn the book. Like I said, I want to reserve some comments till we get to the next lesson. But the next lesson is going to really. Uh, bring some clarification to that point. Bible study is critical. And scripture says that God said his people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And boy, you can see it clear as a bell, especially as the day approaches, the church is being ripped up one side and down the other because people don't know their Bible all kind of foolishness, all kind of nonsense is coming into the church, into the worship service, into how we dress and all, I mean, all kind of non-biblical things, unbiblical things, unholy things are coming into the church because people don't know their Bible. So uh, Bible study is, is critical. Uh, yes, says Jacqueline. Um, some people think um, because they go to church on Sunday, <laughs> that when they hear the preached word that's enough but it's mm -hmm. the difference be and there's a difference between preaching and teaching correct when yeah. the preacher is preaching you can't ask him questions mm -hmm. and it's a sermon mm -hmm. but when he's teaching like you said he's rightly dividing the word of truth mm -hmm. it, it, it's so true so so he's true. breaking down the, the scripture so true. And think about this for a second. Uh, just think about this from a logical standpoint. Did Jesus only preach to his disciples? That we'll, we'll just we'll narrow it down to the 12. Did he just do nothing but preach to them? 
No, he preached to everybody. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. He did a lot of teaching and a lot of training, man. And, and 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 if you understand, he was doing a lot of teaching and training. A lot of the things you read in scripture would all, all of a sudden make sense. People say, "How come there was two feedings?" Uh, you know, five thousand, four thousand. Well, if you understand that he was teaching his disciples uh, in the process, uh, then you would know why it was two. Uh, and, that, and there's many, many other situations and instances in the scriptures that are like that. If you understand, if you understand that Jesus is teaching and training his disciples, you would understand why certain things transpired and happened. So, uh, great point, uh, Sudeti. Uh, and and and. What 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 an amazing thing we 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 don't understand. Listen, this is how important this is, so that people could get it. Jesus would use earthly illustrations mm -hmm. to teach spiritual points. That's how important. That's how imperative yeah. this is. <laughs> he yeah. wanted to make sure there was clarity, you know. And as you saying, you don't get to ask questions, which is why Jesus would often. Ask a person yes. a question, uh, you know, well, who been says I am? Uh, because he wanted them to think, you know, he and he wanted them to understand and rationalize and reason things through. You know, listen, he didn't just make us with a heart, he made us with a brain, too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And Dr. <laughs> Dr. Dr. <laughs> Dr. But also the, the disciples requested to teach us to pray. There you go. Amen. Glory to God. They requested to be taught. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And, and listen, listen, and as simple as this is, people, we, 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 we read that, we hear that, we take it for granted. But let me tell you how profound that is. And we miss it because we don't understand that they were asking to be taught. Uh, and Jesus starts off by saying, here's, here's what you do. He said, our father. So first mm -hmm. of all, we got to recognize that he is God and he is our father. He's our creator. He's made it. He says, so our, our father, which art in heaven. So we understand that we God wants to understand that every good gift, every perfect gift, it comes from above. He is the source of all blessing. Then he says, so you pray, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We are always to honor and glorify and magnify. That's, that's why praise should be continually in your mouth, man. This is, a, this is, this is part of what Jesus is teaching us. And then he says, hallowed be thy name. He, then he says, and then listen to this. We're supposed to be praying, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. If every child of God that prays that prayer understood what they were being taught, I wouldn't have to ask anybody to go out and disciple. I would not have to ask one person, the pastor would ever have to ask you that, because you would know that Jesus is teaching every single child of God to go out there and spread his kingdom. Tell somebody about him. Tell somebody about his father. Tell somebody about the Holy Ghost. Every single child of God has that responsibility. You pray that prayer. And if you don't get that, you have no idea what you're praying about. And you don't understand that Jesus was teaching you something uh, in the process. Somebody had their hand up. Okay, I've got somebody's hands up. So we can see this is critical, y'all. This is critical. But like I said, we do so many things and, and we don't understand even what we're saying because we don't understand this. It's a teaching mood transpiring. Many, many of the things that Jesus said, he said it in a teaching mood. Yes. Uh, and, yes. uh, you, know, uh, you know, he tells okay. you a lot. He says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. That means it's training you, it's teaching you. And then he tells you, he said, look, I gave you the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said, and it was important for you to have it. So important that I had to go so he could come uh, because when he comes, here's what he's going to do. Here's what he said. He says, he's going to teach you. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Yeah, amen. Amen. He also said, teach all nations. Jay, he, we, he wants us to teach all nations. Glory to God. I mean, how we think we don't need this. But this is why the church is so weak. Listen, this is why you don't see miracles. This is why things don't function the way this. This is why people aren't getting healed. Because the church is weak spiritually. Satan is ripping us up one side and down the other. Like I said, everything, everything under the sun is coming in the church. Everything under the sun is coming in there. You some some churches you go to, you don't know if you're in a nightclub or if you're in a church. Uh, and it's it's sad, it's real sad. Mm -hmm. So these Jews had witnessed Christ's miracles occurring right in the midst of them. And couldn't see it, couldn't recognize it, or didn't want to recognize it. Uh, and unlike a lot of these people running around here today, 
who claim they can heal and all that good stuff. You know, I'm not saying that people that can't, but I'm just saying that everybody ain't doing it. That's claiming they're doing it. Uh, and and I always say this. I always say this. If God has given you the power to heal, there's plenty of hospitals out here with plenty of sick folk in them that would love to be healed. You know, and preach and teach. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to keep it simple. I'm just trying to keep playing. And listen. Now, when Christ, I said before, when Christ was here, when the apostles were here, they did not heal everybody that they came in contact with them and they didn't do it it was all for the purpose of verifying the work of god and when god even heals somebody today i'm telling you when, when these type of things happen it's because god is trying to demonstrate something not because of you because you got some great power some great ability no it's god it's god god working the work listen the apostle paul who could work miracles when God authorized it, uh, said this. He said, well, you know, I had an infirmity and uh, I couldn't heal it. He said, you know what? And I went to God and I asked him three times to heal me this. He said, it ain't happened. He said, here was, here, this is what God responds to me. My grace is sufficient. <laughs> so listen, y'all, God, he doesn't always heal every time. Listen. It's all according to his purpose. Don't make it about you. Don't make it about you. It's always about God and what God is seeking to do and what God is seeking to accomplish. Very, very important. You get yourself in trouble if you, if you, if you, don't, if you don't understand that. So uh, Jesus, of course, uh, unlike many uh, people today, his miracles were feats of truly uh, I mean, you talking about defying the natural, uh, the defying explanation. He did some things, boy. He spit on mud, put a person's eye they could see. I mean, he just <laughs> glory to God. You try that. Uh, so listen, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> listen, uh, the Nazarene not only gave sight to the blind, not only did he heal the lepers, but he fed five thousand from a hand full of food and made a lame man. Amen. Amen. But he also claimed turbulent, he also rather calm turbulent seas. He even raised the dead, <laughs> glory to God. Although not overly eager to admit it, Jesus' critics often brought face to face with the facts that no one could do what Jesus did unless God was with him after confessed. <laughs> glory to God. Somebody get Gospel of John chapter three for me and read the first two verses. Gospel of John chapter three, first three verses. And in your own and then at in your own time, you read that whole uh, ninth chapter of John, but for uh for time's sake, we'll just do chapter three, verse one and two. Somebody get that for me. I have there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Yes, sir. The same day, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Hallelujah. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. <laughs> listen, listen, this is some profound stuff. Now, remember what I said, Jesus is, he, 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 he teaches a lot. And when, when, when things are being said and things are being done, he's teaching. So listen to what he's saying. He's saying, he's, he, he, uh, here comes John and then John, he's like, I mean, Nick, Nick Demons, right? Nick Demons said, look here, uh, we know you, we know you from God. <laughs> we, we can see it. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we see the miracles. We see what's going on. And, 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 and Jesus takes that and makes it a teaching moment. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Glory to God. And he's like, let because this is what John, this is what Nicodemus is saying. Nicodemus said, well we see, we see, uh uh and, and, and we know. And Jesus' response was, well you really don't truly see and you really don't truly know unless you're born again. <laughs> Oh, Lord of mercy. You don't get it from human wisdom. And we got another example of that. Uh, and I can see in second sister Eddie, but we got another example of that when uh, uh, Jesus told Peter, he said, I, he said, flesh and blood did not reveal this thing unto you. <laughs> I know that by your response. That came from my father. My father gave you that information. Glory to God. Yes, sister Eddie, go ahead. And, 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 and as I was um, looking it said that nicodemus came to him by night <laughs> and you know what that means he was yes, sir. <laughs> ah, glory to god amen you know a lot of us still slipping and dipping in the night 
But look, look, look. But Jesus, he's always in a teaching mode. He's always trying to get us to understand and realize something. He's and he's thinking way beyond what we're thinking. Because we often when we come, we we come through, we come in the natural, you know, and, and Jesus is trying to deal with us on a spiritual level. Uh and uh it's, yes, there's a lot of things we we think we see, we think we understand, we think we know, uh, but uh when you really take a good look at it through spiritual eyes, I got things that appear differently. Yes, uh, Brother Alexander. I was just thinking which, what we just said. Jesus came to be an example for us. That's correct. So how can we be, how can we teach if we don't get in the word and, and get the understanding of it? That's Amen. where the church is falling short. Amen. They're Amen. teaching philosophy. They're teaching experience. Amen. And other stuff they're teaching doesn't have a name that can be really used and be nice about because it is not of God. Amen. Amen. And think about this, uh, because you're so right. Think about this. With all the miracles Jesus performed, he performed one of the most impressive miracles. One of the most impressive miracles uh, when he was resurrected. Now, the miracles were to verify as John Mark articulated, as everybody, as we just got finished reading here some of the scriptures, these miracles were done to verify who Christ, in fact, was. And the greatest one, the greatest one, the most impressive one, because we know was his resurrection. Because in the agreement with the Old Testament prophecy, and just as he had promised, Christ came forth from the tomb three days after his burial and crucifixion. We see that over in the book of Matthew chapter 16. We see it in verse 21. We see it in chapter 27, verse 63. And we see it in chapter 28, verses 1 through 8. So his resurrection was witnessed by soldiers who had been appointed to guard his tomb. Uh, and in the end, these soldiers had to be bribed. Uh, to uh, change their story <laughs> so that the leaders of the Jews would not lose credibility because the tomb was empty. Glory to God. Uh, and we we know the rest of the story. And of course, they had to try to bribe those soldiers to prevent the Jewish people from uh, recognizing uh, uh, that the true Messiah, in fact, had raised from the dead. And we, we can see think, uh, information about that in, in the 28th chapter, verses 11 through 15. So, it's a matter of history that Christ's tomb was empty on that Sunday morning, almost 2,000 years ago. So if Jesus were not raised from the dead, how come they put a guard there? <laughs> you know, we have this, this is stick from a logical standpoint. You know what I mean? Like if they if they like, oh, he, you know, he just even being in, we, we ain't got to sweat that. Well, why you got to put a guard out there? That's what I want to know. <laughs> and if 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 well, they, you know, uh, uh, well, you know, his 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 disciples might come and steal the body away. Okay, so put a guard there. Why you got to seal it? <laughs> Listen, if you, if you got a guard there, you, that should be sufficient. They got weapons, glory to God. They should be able to, you know, they should be able to take care of the situation. Why ain't got to seal the thing? Uh, you know, see, a lot of times we know, we know, we know better. <laughs> we just, we do anyhow, glory to God. <laughs> so here we go. We they, 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 they put a guard around the tomb and they sealed the tomb, <laughs> glory to God, because they want to try to make sure beyond, listen to this, beyond a shadow of a doubt, they want to make sure wasn't nobody coming out of there and wasn't nobody getting in there. <laughs> but we know the story. I don't, there's no door that a man shuts that God cannot open. And there's no door that God opened that man can shut. Hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, and of course we know Christ, uh, he, he rose from the dead because he was giving verifiable witness to the fact of who he indeed claimed to be. So the fact that he, he raised from the dead was a witness by uh, many different types of people uh, because not only uh, the, the, the soldiers see the temple's tomb was empty, the disciples saw the tomb was empty. Uh, he, he was on the earth uh, for, for a short period of time uh, after the resurrection and, and many people, I think it was over five, yeah, 500, it was over 500 people, according to I think 1 Corinthians 15, 
uh, four through eight, uh, over 500 people witnessed this thing. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, and then the women who went to the tomb with the spices, of course, uh, they gave their account. And so when they saw the living, breathing Jesus, just days, just days after his death, they had concrete proof that he was who he claimed to be all along. Because again, miracles are designed to verify that God is working in your life and that you are who you are uh, if you claim to be working on behalf of the Lord. So even his detractors could not deny the successfulness of the fact and the significance of the empty tomb. Uh, glory to God. So thousands, thousands, and watch this now. This is interesting to me. Thousands of pilgrims travel annually to the grave of the founders of the Buddhist movement. Thousands of them annually, they travel to, to this grave. Uh, and uh, thousands, uh, they make pilgrims and it's just uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, Muslim uh, shrines to pay homage every year. Yet Christians do not make a trek to pay homage to a grave. <laughs> Buddhists do it, Muslims do it, <laughs> many other people do it. And I mean, not Christians. We don't we don't go get a homage to the empty grave. <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> you want to know why? Because we know Christ ain't in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We understand that that tomb is empty. Now somebody might want to go look 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 into an empty tomb, but they ain't going there looking for Jesus, <laughs> that's for sure. A dead savior is no good to anybody. So for those who accept and act upon the evidence of Christ's deity, provided the resurrection, life is meaningful. It's rich. It's full. Uh, and of course, if you read First Corinthians chapter fifteen, uh, Paul does a tremendous discussion about that in great detail. So, for those who reject Christ's resurrection, the vacant tomb will stand forever as a testimony, one of the greatest testimonies for about one of the greatest mysteries. And one day it'll serve as their silent judge, glory to God. So in conclusion of this particular lesson, who is Jesus of Nazareth? He had no formal rabbinical training, interesting. No, he possessed no material wealth, according to John 7, 15 and Luke 9, 58, as well as 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Yet through his teachings, he turned the world up Side down, according to Acts 17, 6. Clearly, as the evidence documents, he was and is both the son of man, and we pointed out how that works, and the son of God. He lived, he died to redeem fallen mankind. He gave himself a ransom, according to Matthew chapter 20, 28. He, in fact, is God who uh, predates and will outlast time itself, according to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Praise God. So let's look at some of the questions on lesson four before we get into lesson five. So uh, on the truth and false, number one, the Bible teaches that Jesus possesses two natures, one divine, one human, true or false? True. 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 Amen. Praise God. That's true, right? Amen. True. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's both he's both human and divine in his yeah. nature. Glory to God. That is you. Yes, hallelujah. We're so thankful uh and grateful uh for that because what a benefit. <laughs> now, uh Jesus was born of a virgin. True. Yeah. True. Uh, True. Jesus was a, de a descendant of Jacob's brother Esau. Oh. Amen. Anyone who was merely a man and yet claimed to be the son of God cannot be considered a great moral teacher. True. Mm -hmm. No, that's false. Let me repeat it. That's false. Yeah, that's false. That's false. Great uh, moral teacher. Amen. Uh, number five, it is very likely that a single man can fulfill by chance all the prophecies relating to the Messiah. Single, oh. that's oh. false because oh. oh. there's no single man that can fulfill that, only Christ can, right? Fulfill that. Amen. Lord. Amen. 
Number six, Christians worship yeah. God on the first day of the week because Christ is still in the tomb. Oh. Yes, we do. That's a false. That's a false. Amen. <laughs> Jesus never became weary, frustrated, or sad. Oh, oh. Isn't, that, isn't that interesting? Yeah, because oh. he, yeah, somebody pointed out, he he's our example. So yeah, yeah. Thank you for those things. Uh, glory to God. All right, and uh, number eight, Jesus lived and died to save men from their sins. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Praise, yeah. Jesus, praise God. Yeah. Amen. All right. So now we're looking at the multiple choice one. Uh, multiple choice. The first one. Uh, number one. What's the answer? C. 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 Is C is correct. Number two. B. B is correct. Number three. A. A is correct. Oh, sorry. A. Number four. A. A. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, let me just pull mine up here a little bit. And number five. B. B. That is correct. That's correct. All right. So now we're going to look at the matching. Number one. Nathaniel. F. F is correct. Number two. E. e is correct. Number three. G. That's correct. Number four. C. C. That's correct. Number five. A. A. Yep. Number six. A. A. Yep. Number seven. D. Okay. Number eight. B. Hey, Amen. Praise God. Boy, y'all on the ball there. All right, so now we got to fill in the blanks. <clears throat> if blank had not died. If Jesus Christ had not died. Yes, Christ, of course, yeah. Uh, there would have been, been no, no atonement. No, no atonement. No atonement, no atonement of forgiveness. Sin. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Number two, there are only what? Three. One. Three is he's one is he, liar, lunatic, or the, or the true son of God. One of, it can only be one of them. Uh, number three, uh, one cannot logically accept Jesus as a great moral blank, teacher, teacher, right? Okay, and then claim that he was not God. 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 Glory to God. All right, that's very good. Number four, scholars have the uh, document over how many messianic prophecies, 300. Okay, in the what testament. Oh, oh Amen. Glory to God. So Jesus' miracles were intended to prove that he is God. Amen. He is God. Praise God. Amen. So any other questions on this lesson before we move on to the next one? Nope. Amen. Praise God. But this next lesson, I I, I tell you what, I I, I I prepared a sermon on this for my congregation that I'm that uh, I preached on because this thing is I think it's it's profound. Uh but we're gonna be looking at Satan. Uh, and uh, his origin and his mission. Now, wow. now we're going to take our time and go through this because if you get this, you will understand why Bible study is so important. <laughs> because <clears throat> he's got a mission. Uh, and uh, he's out to destroy you, whether you want to destroy him or not. So you you can sit back and, and try to relax and take it easy and lay on the beach and look at the sun if you want. <laughs> but he's out to destroy you. That's his mission. So listen, uh, life is difficult enough on its own. If you've been on this earth for long enough, you know that's true. Without any outside force stacking the deck, life is difficult, man. I know for some of us that of age, it's difficult getting out to bed sometime in the morning. <laughs> Mercy Lord. Some people have problems even kind of sleep. Uh, so so we, 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 we know that if you work on a job, you got difficulties there. If you're in kind of relationship, you're going to have some kind of difficulties. So unfortunately, however, there is an outside force that's marshaled against us. And within the pages of the Holy Writ, that outside force is identified for us. Because, you know, God is merciful. He's graceful. Uh, he loves us and he wants us to understand. And so he identifies for us by a variety of designations. Now, this is important. Uh, listen to what I just said. Because we have an adversary out there, he is a formidable force. He is a vigilant adversary. God, in his mercy and his grace, and compassion and love and concern for you and I has identified that rascal for us. So we could know beyond a shadow of a gown. And here's how he has done it. He has given us a variety 
of designations, which I'll get into. I don't know if I can get through it tonight, but we will. We'll get into it. He has given us a variety of designations. Uh, the best one and most widely known is Satan. Everybody's heard that one. Everybody knows about that one, but that's a designation. Now, here's what Bible study becomes critical. How do you know what the rest of the designations are if you never studied the Bible? You have a lot of Christians that have no idea all the designations of Satan. You may know some of them. And when we go through the list, just ask yourself the question, oh, did I know that? Because it's in the Bible. And it was put in there for you to know it. And the reason why it was put in there for you to know it is so that you would know how to deal with the devil. Now, listen, you can't see him. I can't see him. You can't kill a spirit. So how do we defeat the rascal? God says, well, I'll tell you how. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you who he is, how he operates. So you know what to do. And listen, this is what God, and God said. And if you will put on, not some, if you will put on the whole armor of God, you will be able to resist him. And because you're able to resist him, guess what he will do? He will flee. He ain't going to walk away. He going to run. <laughs> He gonna run because listen. He gonna run because he understands you know who he is and what he's doing. Listen, you remember when uh, the sons of Sceva tried to cast out devils, and them devils looked at them boys and said, "Look here, now we know Paul. Now remember teaching mode, teaching mode. What did they mean? I'm gonna ask you. When the demon said we know Paul, what did they mean by that? Somebody tell me. They knew Paul. Uh, represented Christ. He, he had Christ in him. He was teach, pe teaching the word. Okay, well, yeah. They, he they, identified they, the Jesus. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. They, they, they could, yeah, they could look at him and see, but they knew he could identify uh, uh, who they were. He could identify them. Now, how do we know that? Because listen to what Paul says. Paul says, we are not ignorant of his devices. His devices. You, remember, you remember the scripture? <laughs> you remember that Paul said, Paul said, look, I know this. I know them rascals, man. I know how they operate. I know what they do. I know you don't want because God has told me. God has shown me. We got a document. We don't have to guess about this thing or wonder about this thing. It's in the book. Well, we don't get in there. We're not allowing us. We don't come to Bible study. We're not being taught. Glory to God. But uh, Paul said, Paul said, we listen. He said, no, I'm not. So he, they said, well, we know Paul. And we sure enough, we know Jesus. But they said, like, who are you? <laughs> Have mercy. Did they know what they messing with? And you better not mess with them if you don't know what you're doing. So listen, one of the designations, most well known, of course, we know is Satan. From the first book of the Bible to the very last book, which we know is Revelation, the existence of Satan as a real, literal adversary is affirmed. People say, well, I don't believe no devil. Well, you, know, you don't have to believe no devil. The Bible makes it clear from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible makes it clear that he's it, he's real uh, and that he's an enemy. Glory to God. But what or who is this devil? That's another one of his designations, by the way. So Satan, who established himself as God's arch fiend. fiend. That's important to get. He is an enemy of God. He is an arch fiend, and he is our adherent foe. So listen, he's God's arch enemy. He, he's our adherent foe. He is out to take you out. The scripture puts it like this, so we shouldn't be ignorant. The scripture said he is like a roaring lion. That's one of the designations that God's telling me. He's telling me. God said, look here, make no mistake. My children, make no mistake, God's saying to you, he's saying, listen, this rascal, Satan, one of his designations is he is like a roaring lion. And he's roaming to and fro, trying to find out who he can devour. God's telling you right up front, this guy is out to destroy you. Don't play with him. 
Don't toy with him. Don't hang with him. Don't mess with him because he is not your friend. He is out to destroy. Oh, I'll just take a little puff. He is out. Oh, I'll just take a little sip. He is out. To, don't play with him. He is out to destroy you. <laughs> Glory to God. And God is telling us this right up front. Right up front. And when we play, we play with it. We play with it. Uh, God said, listen, from Genesis to Revelation, this rascal is your enemy. So why has he arrayed himself against God? And why has he arrayed himself against you and I? Because he's got a mission. Uh, <laughs> and so it's important for us to understand what the mission is. Now, there are questions that cry from our hearts as human beings. One of the things is, and I've even heard people say, you know, well, where did, where did Satan come from? Did, 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 was he always in existence? Did God make him? You know, uh, the Bible does not address specifically the origin of Satan, yet there is adequate information to draw a logical and well-reasoned conclusion as to how he came into existence. So let's consider some things biblically. First of all, is he deity? Now, although quite powerful, Satan does not, let me repeat that, he does not enjoy the status of deity. He would, he, he wanted to, that's <laughs> uh, one of the mistakes he made, <clears throat> but he doesn't enjoy that status. Clues to this fact are scattered throughout the scriptures uh, uh, from again Genesis to Revelation. Here's what's important: Deity is eternal. In other words, deity has no beginning and it has no end. Uh, so, Scripture speaks of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost as being eternal. Somebody get Deuteronomy chapter thirty-three for me. Uh, in verse 27, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. Somebody have that? I have it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Amen. Praise God. So he is eternal. That is the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are eternal. Somebody get Psalms 102, verse 27. Psalms 102, verse 27. He is eternal. Satan is not. I have it. All right, go ahead. But thy art the same. And thy years shall have no end. Mm. So who is he? He is Revelation 1 8 Alpha. He has no beginning. Uh, and he's Omega. He has no end. Glory to God. He has always existed. And in order to be God, he has to have been something that always existed. He's great. He can't be God. Amen. Yes, Brother Alexander. Uh, what was the scripture for Deuteronomy? Deuteronomy what? Chapter, chapter 33, verse 27. 33, 27? Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Amen. So he's Alpha. He's Omega, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. So because deity has no beginning and it has no end, it makes it omnipotent. Uh, and uh, we certainly see that God is referred to as God Almighty, according to Genesis chapter 17, verse 1. And so uh, somebody get Job chapter 42, verse 1 and 2 for me. Job chapter 42, verse 1 and 2 for me. He is the Almighty because he is deity. He is without beginning. He is without end. He'd have to be Almighty in order to be that. Glory to God. I have that one. All right, go ahead. Then Job answered to the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee. 
movie to guy. Listen, he knows everything, boy. <laughs> he knows everything. He's a lesson. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere, knows everything. Glory to God. And while you're in the book of Job, get go over to chapter 26 and pick it up at verse 13, read verse 13 and 14 for us. By, you? By his spirit, he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Lo, these are parts of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? My God, <laughs> well, he got the thunder. His power is mighty, man. You think you hear thunder, lightning outside? Somebody that can shake you up or rock you up, but ain't nothing like ain't nothing like what God got. Glory to God, have mercy. So uh, he, he has this. He has the ability to create. Genesis one one teaches us that, of course, uh, in Isaiah forty five twelve, uh, and to destroy, according to Second uh, Peter three ten, because he's all powerful. He's the Almighty. He alone restrains the power uh to instill life retains rather he, he alone retains the power to instill life we see that over in the book of genesis again especially in chapter two and specifically uh to the detail in chapters in verse seven and to raise the dead uh my favorite book ephesians chapter one verse 20 uh points that out so he he is in fact deity which satan is not satan is not omnipotent satan is not omnipresent and he's not omniscient he's certainly none of those things uh so there is no creature no creature hidden from the sight of god according to the bible all things are naked and open to his eyes the scripture says to whom we must give an account we see that over in Hebrews chapter four, verse 13. So it's really important if God asks us to do something, we're gonna be held accountable. It's real important. Now, let me just take a moment to stress this. The writer in Hebrew points out that nobody can hide from him. He sees everything. And the writer points out because everything is open to him, we all have to give an account to him because he made us. He created us. That's, that includes Satan. Because God created Satan and because God sees everything Satan does, he knows everything Satan does, Satan has to give an account to God. Well, how do we know that that's a fact? Well, the story of Job, the Bible tells us there was a council. All the angels, they, they came before God. And uh, according to the book of Job, guess who was among them? The devil was right there. Satan was right there with him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yes, Brother Roman goes, go ahead. No, uh, no, no. I just got excited a little bit. <laughs> yeah, listen, he was right there, man. You know what? You know why he had to be there? Because everything has to give an account to God. Everybody. Uh, and so that included him. He had to be there. He's a created being. So he had to be there. He had to give an account. And so God said, well, hey, look at him. what you've been doing, man. <laughs> Listen, as I said before, even down on earth, Jesus was always in the teaching mode. And uh, when God speaks, he's always he's, he's in the teaching mode. man. He said, because he already knew what Satan was doing, you know, but he's teaching us something. He's trying to get us to understand something. So he asked Satan, he says, um, what you been doing, man? <laughs> Satan said, well, you know, I've been to and fro, up and down, man. You know, in other, words, he was, in other words, this is what God is trying to teach us. This is what God is saying. God is saying, first and foremost, Satan is accountable to God. He's got to he's got to give an account to God. He's this is, I don't care how mean, nasty, even that rascal is, he still has to give an account to God. Uh, and what God wants us to understand is. He's on his job. See, a lot of us, we, a lot of us, we 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 have stepping. We wishy washy. We sometimes we show up, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we do. We sometimes we don't. If I feel like it, I will. If I don't feel like it, I won't. <laughs> but not him. He's on the job, man. Uh, the guy said, "Well, what you doing, like, man? I'm look here. I'm, 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 I've I've been on my job. I've been to and fro, up and down." And he said, "Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you say you've been on the job, man. You know." Is it possible you could have missed somebody? Uh, did you, you know, you know, so there's a lot of folks down there on earth. You know, he said, uh, how about Joe? He, I tried him too. <laughs> I ain't missed nobody. Listen, so guys, guys, what you understand, 
he's not just after the sinners. He's not just after the unrighteous. He's not just after the ungodly. He's not just after those that don't know God. He's after everybody. And God said, I want you to understand, he, he's trying the people of God too. He, they say, well, I tried him, sure enough, I did, man. He said, but I couldn't do nothing. God, God wants us to understand when we're in his hands, glory to God, and we're doing what he asks us to do, everything is hunky-dory. Glory to God. We're safe, sanctified, sealed. Glory to God when we're in his hands. Jesus said, everybody you gave me, I ain't lost nobody except for the one because the scripture had to be fulfilled. He said, but you put on my hand, anybody taking them out, glory to God. You got to jump out. You ain't, listen, nobody can't take you. You have to jump out. Glory to God. And rest of God. So listen, so God said, I want you to understand the glory to God. When you're in my hands, you're good to go. He said, I can't do nothing because you got a hedge around that brother. One scripture helps us to understand what that hedge is. The Bible lets us know that every child of God is given an angel. Every child of God is assigned at least one. You might get more than one, but everybody gets at least one. And the Bible says they are ministering spirits. Every child of God has been given an angel to minister to that individual because God is merciful, because God is gracious, because God is loving, and because he knows we have an adversary. Glory to God. He knows it. He knows it. And so he, so Satan says, I, 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 want, I want to get that, I, I, but I couldn't. He said, now I'll tell you what. If you take the hedge down, <laughs> he says, I can go to work on him. <laughs> so God wants us to understand, first of all, he provides protection. And doesn't the Bible say that he's a protector? He wants us to understand that he will provide protection as long as we do what he asks us to do. He will provide. He said, I'll fight your battle as long as you do what, you, what I ask you to do. I'll fight the battle. Uh, and here's the other thing. Because Satan is accountable to God, he cannot do anything without asking God's permission. That's important to get. That's really what they got to ask the permission, man. He said, he said, look, I can't do nothing unless you take the head. He had to ask God's permission to take the heads down so he could go work on him. <laughs> and God said, look, here. all right. He says, uh, I'll take the heads down, but you cannot. You cannot take his life. <laughs> I love that. Hallelujah. You know, because the soul is precious, man. The soul belongs to God. He made it. Glory to God. It belongs to him. He said, you can mess with anything else you want. <laughs> can't have that. No, you can't mess with that. <laughs> Glory to God. Have mercy, Lord. That's Listen, you can get sick. You can get headaches. You can have pains. You can lose an arm. You can lose a leg. You can be in the hospital. All kind of crazy stuff can happen to you. But as long as you breathe in, as long as you allow, <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. You can have an opportunity to make it in. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. So, uh, yes, Sister Jacqueline. Um, Reverend, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um. I hear, you know, a lot of people, they um, talk to Satan and fuss Satan out. Mm -hmm. But as upon my, my studying, I ran across Jude 1 and 9. Mm -hmm. And it says, yet Michael, the archangel, when mm -hmm. contending with the devil, <laughs> he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, mm -hmm. but said, the Lord rebuke thee amen you know again you know why people again i'm gonna repeat this uh people do so many unbiblical things because they don't come to bible study they or they don't study their bibles they don't know their bibles thank you so much for that because that's correct you're not supposed to do that <laughs> that's in the book guess what <laughs> lord have mercy we get ourselves in trouble. And I said earlier, earlier in the study, I said, don't mess with him. Don't play with him if you know what you're doing, because uh, yeah, you'll get yourself in trouble. Yes, uh, Dr. Nordy. Uh, yes, uh, that Jude 9. Uh, nine. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. uh, we it's an example to all Christians that mm -hmm. we don't have to have no discussion mm -hmm. with the devil. Amen. No, Amen. no, no discussion. Amen. We just have to know that God is in us. Jesus Christ is in us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to uh, bring ourselves on the uh, uh, arguments, arguing with him, because he knows 
then he has to do his work because he's got to account, like you just mm -hmm. said. He mm -hmm. has to account, so he has to do his work 24-7. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like morning time, afternoon time. He has to do it all day long. So we don't have the time to argue with him. Amen. We have to do, Amen. go about our father's business. Listen, we, we can't do the one thing God asked us to do. If we weren't about trying to cast out demons. We can't do the one thing he asked us to do. We can't do. Now, guess what he asked us to do? He asked us to preach his word. <laughs> he asked us to do that. He told us to do that. We commanded to do that. But if we will do it, we can't do it for many. Glory to God. You got to pull the teeth out of people to get them to preach the gospel. Uh, and that's the one thing he told us to do. Command. That's what, listen, whenever Jesus responded to Satan, he responded with the word of God. Then, then listen, when demons were cast out, whether it was by Jesus or by the apostles, I'll go back what I said once again, it was to verify that God was working through them. It wasn't just no happen thing. I'm just going, oh, you got a demon, I'm going to cast that demon out today. No, that's not how it operated. At the Bible, you don't see that because not every demon was cast out. Glory to God. When Jesus did it, when Paul did it, it was to verify that they were who they said they were or to accomplish a person or mission on God. Remember when God, when, they, when the disciples said, they said, you know, what, uh, uh, this, this, this man is blind. What is he, what, what did, what, there was something he did or something that his parents did. And then he said, Jesus said, no, uh, he was born by that the power of God might be demonstrated through him. That was the purpose, uh, glory to God. So we, everything that we do as people of God has got to be about God. Don't make it about you. It's got to be about God and his purpose. Uh, and I see our time is on, so let me just say this real quick. We'll finish this up next week. Remember this, the Bible says you are called. That means it's not about what you want. God calls us, and if he calls us, he's calling us to purpose. The Bible said we are called according to his purpose, not ours, his. The Bible is very clear about that. It's very specific about it. And on another occasion, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then when we do that, then God said, then he, God, will give us everything we need. See, we got to make it about him. And so this is it. You better make it about him or you're going to get yourself in trouble. The Bible is very clear about that. We have been called to glorify God in our bodies. Praise God. And so we'll have to close that uh, with, uh, with that today. We'll pick it back up next week, Lord willing. We'll get into this thing. Like I said, we'll get into all the various uh, descriptions that the Bible brings about Satan and talk about what they mean what the implication is, what God wants to understand about it, so that you and I don't have to be ignorant of his devices. We'll be better equipped, better able uh, to put on the whole arm of God and fight against that rascal. When I say fight against that rascal, uh, we're in a defensive mode. Glory to God, because God does all the offensive work. Glory to God. So thank God for that. Amen. Uh, and when we're on the offense, it's because God is directing us to be so. Uh, but we often have to be on the defense because the enemy comes at us whether we want, we want him to or not, because he's out to uh, destroy us. Praise God. Amen. Any questions, any comments uh, before we close out? Amen. Amen. Uh, then I don't know if Dr. Bethia is still on. Dr. Bethia, if you're still there, we have you have some comments before we close out. No comment, sir. Mm -mm. Amen. Praise Very God. Fine. All right. So we can continue to look at your scriptures, study the Bible. We'll be looking uh, again at uh, Satan. You might want to do some study on your own, uh, but we will uh, just get into this. We've got a lot of scriptures to cover because the Bible talks a great deal about it. Because God wants us to be uh, cognizant of it. Yes, uh, Sister uh, 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 Smith, Ronnie Smith. Yes, sir. Are you sending that lesson out? Uh, I will not yet. Well, well, okay. uh, at the back end of it, I will. Yes, sir. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because I want you to pay attention to what we're going through. <laughs> uh, and then uh, at the back end of the course, I will post it uh, so that uh, because this information is, 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 is helpful, it's beneficial. And it'd be something you always can, you can lean off of. Uh, glory to God. All right. Then we're going to ask um, Sister May Eddie, if you would close this out with a word of prayer. Please keep on mind all those that are uh, grieving and uh, bereaving and uh, going through. Praise God. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we come to you, Father God, with thanksgiving in our heart, Father God. We just want to say that we love you, thought of our heart, mm -hmm. soul, mind, might, and strength. Father God, thank you for this class tonight. Thank you, Father God, for our professor, Dr. Blunt. Thank you, Father God, for Dr. Bethea and all the professors that are on tonight. Thank you for the students, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for the word that was taught tonight, Father God, in the name of Jesus, it Thank fell you. on fertile ground. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father God, that, that uh, Dr. Blunt, Father God, that he studied the word, he sat down with the Holy Spirit, and you could tell that he sat and supped with him in the name of Jesus, because that word is so good. He said, come taste and see that the Lord is good. This word was delicious. But not only that, he taught us how to apply the word to our lives. So Father God, continue to bless each and every one on here, Father God. And Father God, let us not forget, Father God, what we have learned tonight, Father God. And let us go out, Father God, and teach someone else, Father God, and do the Great Commission. So Father God, we pray for everyone, Father God, that who's going in the hospital to have surgery, Father mm -hmm. God. We pray, Father God, for the, the sick, Father God, for the bereaved, Father God. Father God, you're the God of all comfort, Father God, and you are the healer. You are the great physician. And Father God, there's nothing that you can't do because we just learned tonight that you're omnipresent, you're omnipotent. Mm -hmm. Father Thanks. God, you're omniscient. Father God, you're sovereign. Father mm. God, you, is there's nothing that you can't do. So, Father God, we thank you for being our God, our Lord, and our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. We'll turn it back over to Dr. Amen. 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 Praise God. God be the glory. God be the glory. Good class. I, I really enjoyed that class. Yes. And uh, it, it's just... Mm. It's just awesome. Um, the adversary has no idea that God used him. Amen. He, he used him. And, and, and right. like God, the scripture says, uh, uh, he has to have permission. Amen. So we don't worry, walk around worrying about this and that because we know that God has placed that hedge of protection around us. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Williams, are you there, sir? I don't believe. Yes, sir, I am. I'm, I'm almost at the house. Had to go see okay. the new oh. grandbaby, and it was late getting out of there. So. Oh, okay, yes, sir. sir. Oh, oh okay. no, sir. I, I am. I am. I'm here. Absolutely, got, it's a wonderful, wonderful I, life of electronics and mobility. I think <laughs> it's good. I thought maybe you were still uh, uh, sailing the seven seas, but thank God mm -hmm. you're back safely. But no, God, sir. pardon. No, sir. I'm I'm bad. I'm bad. Okay. Okay. All right. God be the glory. Okay. Um, until Dr. Williams come in, I'm just going to um, throw some of the questions out there to continue with some of the questions that we were asked. I was asking uh, the last time. Uh, why did Jesus die for you? Uh so we'll just open uh, the session up with that particular question and get some input. Why did Jesus die for you? Anyone, anyone, just feel free to jump right in with that. Why did well, Jesus die for you? I, I sent my paper um, to, to Dr. Williams. Yes. Mm -hmm. today, and that it was so thought provoking um and it, and I'm full right now but I know that it took me back to it took me I'm gonna try to make this short it took me back to God and for God so loved the world it took me back to that scripture because God loved us so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and I'm a whosoever believeth um, on him shall have everlasting life. So Jesus died for me because he loves me because he's been obedient. He's been obedient to God, the father. And um, Jesus desires for no one to be lost, for no one to go to hell, but he died so I can have life and have life more abundantly. So I could choose and have a choice to accept him as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I can have eternal life. But not only that, so I could get to know him, so I could 
Um, we always say this, and Dr. Bethea, you teach us this and all the professors. So I could study his word, you know, to show myself approved, you know, unto God, a workman, um, um, not to be ashamed, to rightly divide the word of truth. And, and because I can learn of him, you know, and, and so I can have an intimate relationship with him because he died because he loves us, but he also died so we could glorify him and praise him and worship him and preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to witness. So I have all of that in my paper. And I mean, I could just go on. Okay. Um, why how much Jesus loves me, but I'm going to stop right there and why he died for me. But Dr. Bethea, you always said something that rang in my heart. It started with love. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. But that, that is so true. Now, when we just, this, this particular class is critical thinking. And this is where you, you exercise the gift that God has given you. Now, your critical thinking runs parallel with the scripture. All right. If someone else could get uh, contribute some input, why did Jesus okay. die for you? It's, it, and first of all, let me make it cl particularly clear mm -hmm. that we're not questioning God as to why uh, he did it this way. We're just asking that particular question. Yes, Sister Renee. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Sister Renee, you have your hand up. A uh, brother Watkins. I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. have my. Um, oh. I was. Mute. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Renee. Okay, he died as a substitute, uh, substitutionary atonement for my sins. Um, it's not. He showed his love for us that while we were still sinners, and that's the reason why he died for us. Um, it was. It wasn't because not because we was good enough, but because he loved us so much, and he wanted us to spend eternity uh, with him. That's the same thing, uh, Sister Jackie said. He wanted us to spend eternity with him. It's not that we were good. It's because he was good in us, and he loved us so much that God gave His begotten Son for our sins to atone for our sins. So. Okay, all right, that, that's 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 good. Uh, I believe Brother Watkins, or Sister Watkins. Yes, I have my hand up. Um, and he also died to free us from sin. Jesus' death freed us from the power of sin. According to Christian belief, Jesus' death on the cross is understood to have freed humanity from the power of sin. Uh, Romans 6 and 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. Twice in Romans 6, God says that believers in Christ are free from sin. And verse 18 and 22 we are not free of sin, but we are definitely free from sin. The chains are broken. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, okay. Yeah, that, that, oh, thank you so much. Now, that, that implies, that gives so much. Let's just uh, analyze just what she just said here. Let's, let's, we, we've been set free through Christ Jesus' death. Free from sin. Now, when we critically think about this, we can't really expound on the great love that Christ, God has for us because these lips of clay in, in this body cannot, I, this is what I feel, cannot give him enough for what he has done for humanity. You know, and, and, and when we kind of like open that, I open that up by saying, why did Christ die for you? He died for humanity. He died for the Muslims. He died for the Buddhists, the Christian, the backslider, all of those Christ has died for. So here, when we began to look at this, from a spiritual standpoint of view, the love cannot be measured. It's an eternal love. The love of God is eternal. Isn't that beautiful? 
that know that God, when he created, let's go back, look at the barrel sheep. Let's look at uh, in the beginning. Now, just let's look at the first verse of Genesis. Somebody read just the first verse of Genesis for me. And, and I want us to understand and, uh, the significance from a spiritual standpoint of view, what this earth is and who is for. Come on, just read that. Genesis 1. Um, yes. In the beginning, in the be okay. Yes, go ahead, please. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. All right, the let's, let's just stop right there. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Now, let us roll. What was God's last creation? Who, what, what did he create at last? Woman. Man. Well, woman. Humanity. Humanity. And he created us for this earth. Now, uh, so God is prepared the earth uh, and the, the prayer of the disciple. Our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come where? In the earth. earth. Hello, earth. somebody. On in earth. the earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. So here God has created this earth for our humanity. Now, and God, uh, Dr. Blunt was talking just a few minutes ago about purpose. And, and, uh, and I always have known that God is a purpose-driven God. He doesn't make plans. He has purpose. The purpose that God made for humanity. Someone tell me out a little bit. What do you think that purpose is? The purpose. Praise him. To be with him. Exactly. To be, be in connection with him, like he did with Adam in the garden. That mm -hmm. was the original plan. He he come and visit and they talk and and a, a, a relationship. There you go. Yes. Those relationship with with him. He he came to them. And 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 they they with were with him and he they talked and they they were just together. It was like his child. Was, that was his first son. It's just it, that that's, that was his a part of him. And he was getting, they were going back and forth with each other. So they were always together up until the fall. Relationship. To be with so that re So that relationship and the purpose God, it's he built, he created the earth for humanity to reign on it. Mm -hmm. Not just for a thousand years, but for eternity. The relationship that God established between his creation and himself was for eternity. God has not changed that purpose. That purpose is now we see what uh, sin has done entered into the equation but that didn't change God's purpose mm -hmm. so why did Christ have to die for me now that question can go on and on we got lots of answers to it but one in in in, in particular this I feel this so necessary. God wants to reestablish that eternal relationship with Him for eternity. Reconcile us back to Him. A way back. The way back was through Christ Jesus. If Jesus had not died, there would still have been an eternal relationship. But it would not have been with God. It would have been Satan. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. So <laughs> this is so it's just not a question that we can look at really lightly and give some uh, quick answers to it when we begin to look look at it from a critical thinking in a way that can illuminate uh, a whole of humanity. Hallelujah, praise God. So why did Jesus have to die for me? Okay, someone else, uh, Brother Chester, you give me some input there. Why did Jesus have to die for me? You give me some input on that, please. Yes, sir. Uh, so the biggest thing, and this is Chester talking, is love because when we look at Matthew, you know, 22 and 37, Jesus tell them, thou shalt love the Lord of God with all your heart. That was the greatest commandment we got. With that being said, understanding from that, he created us in his image and likeness to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to praise him. So with that had being said, once first man, Adam, introduced that sin into the world, God reclaimed it back to himself by wiping out, restarting it, and creating it all over. But sin was in the world. And he had to somehow, he already knew this, reconcile that it was said it back to himself. So with that love, he sent his only begotten son so he can take it back and give it back to us. And that Amen. goes from Genesis all the way to Revelation. But then in 1 Peter 2 and 24, he shows his love again. Who in his own self bore our sins and his body for on the, on the cross and died for our sins, for our righteousness, and by his stripes, he brought all that back to us, bearing all the things that he knew we were going to do, because he looked into the future and saw all these things. Mm -hmm. The love he had brought his son to this earth to walk for us, to do everything he knew that a human was going to do. Since he created us, he already knew what Jesus needed, knew it had to be done to show us through love everything we're going to go through He's already done. Then once he died, he reconciled all those sins back to himself with his blood. So his father can look through a lens at us saying, I see none of your sins. And if you do and repent, I throw them to see a forgiveness. And now I've brought you to the light. Okay. All thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Williams, uh, yes, you're, right, you're right on time. Yeah? So I'm going to release the class to you. But I, I thank you for that input, Brother Chester, because the Bible tells, specifically tells us, no greater love than a man that lays down his life for whom? Who did it? Jesus. His brother. Jesus Christ laid down his life for humanity. Why did Jesus have to die? for me that that question can go dr william you have amen sir? thank you sir thank mm -hmm. you sir amen thank you guys for being patient with us i'm glad doc, dr bethea had already went into that i did get to an opportunity to read some of the papers is brother robertson in here uh no sir brother no, robertson no. is in the hospital oh i mean he's he's not in the hospital he's up there Oh, okay. uh, I think someone just passed away. Okay. And All right. the pastor was called in. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Well, some of you did. And one of the wonderful things is, um, and Doc, to bring home is that I wanted to make sure that you understood the question. In order to answer the question, which is part of your class, is you have to make it personal. Um, in order to make it personal, it'll automatically cause you to come out of the box. You got to look at it. Um, some of you did that. Some of you did not. I just, we're going to be honest with that. Um, the wonderful thing about um, electronics and, and the world that we're in now, that even in Costa Maya and Cozumel, as long as you got a data connection, you can see the work. So I did get to read all of it, even though I was on vacation. Some of it I did read today. Some of them I still have to read. 
But the object, the reason I gave you that question is to cause you to think of yourself um, as Dr. Patel was showing in a broader aspect of it. And they examine it. It was a personal question. Why did Jesus die for me? Um, to, to give you an example, for me, it would it uh, you'd say, why did Jesus die for me? He died for me in order to reconcile myself myself unto him, one who was unclean and not worthy. Yet he found me worthy. He died for me, as it seems the simpler thing that Dr. Bethel was saying, is because he loved me even when I did not love myself. For if I loved myself, I wouldn't have done some of the things that I did in my youthful age. And have we not all done things that we don't want nobody to know but us and God? And if you think of that, if you if you were, and not that we are, but if you was in his position, would you want to reconcile me back to yourself? No, you had to look at yourself in order to truly answer it. Um, and I want somebody to to complete this sentence. Um, and so that was just to say that. But if I say, um, if I would say, can you complete this scripture? If my people, and what is the rest? Who wants to finish it? Anybody jump in there. And seek God's way. Turn from their wicked ways. Turn from their wicked ways. Turn from their wicked ways. From their then wicked ways. you'll hear from heaven. You'll hear from heaven. And do what? Hear the land. Okay. So, uh, what if we put our name? What if we put our name in that? Heaven and we forgive their sins. And he My God. What if we? What if? But what if we put our name in that place? If James would turn, would pray. Seek my face and turn from his wicked ways. Then would I hear from heaven, huh? What if you put your name in that place? Don't put people. Put it in your name. If mm. Michael would turn from his seek my face, pray, seek my face, and turn from his wicked ways. If he do all three of them things, I will hear from heaven, Jesus. But because uh, I believe that um, Brother Ramagos had made it clear before, and we had looked at it, that no man cometh to the Father except by me. And who do you have to go by? Jesus. Jesus. Uh, absolutely. After, if you have to think about that, then you've got to go back to read both of them scriptures because it clearly states that you got to both. That's what Jesus is saying. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from my Father and restore everything that you've lost. Then will I hear from my father and restore your health. Then will I hear from my father and heal your children. Then will I hear from my father and restore everything that you threw away. You have to, and I don't want to sound like I'm preaching, but that the question was a trick question. It called you to have to come out of the box and think about yourself. We do think of people, and if and and it because we like to say, um, and anybody jump in, y'all know I don't like a silent class. Um, <laughs> if we you, know, you would throw your hand up, I'm watching it. But we, in order for you to tell me about being hungry, you have had to have been hungry yourself. How are you going to tell me that a God that I cannot see, and I'm looking at you? But you can't tell me that he restored you from where you were. How believable is that? Can you under would you be able to understand my circumstances if I was in and I'm gonna ask my my counselors in here as well? How are you gonna answer me if I'm telling you I don't feel worthy? You know, why would anybody love me if they knew the things that I've done? Why would they love me? And you telling me there's a Jesus out there that will love me just as I am, that he will restore to me? How are you going to do that if he's never restored anything to you? With confidence. That's the question for the class. How are you going to do that with confidence? Sister Campbell, can you answer that for me? Um. Well, 
I, we all have fallen short. A lot of us have things. We just don't mm-hmm. all talk about everything that, you know, right. we go through, we've done things. Mm-hmm. God has pulled us out of many things, but you might not know personally, but we all right. fall short because the Bible does teach us that we all fall short. We all have to come to a point of repentance for things that we've done. Like you said, things that don't nobody know about. Your mama don't know, your daddy don't know, nobody know but God. (laughs) Absolutely. So would you say, would y'all say that we have to do um, that that particular question? And I'm going to drive on that because you won't, you're probably going to get some more. But that particular question calls for, what's the word I'm looking at? Is it introspect? An inward look? Transparency. Uh, Transparency. uh, Right. One of the things that we find that even in the theological realms, as we say, in theological circles, is uh, and the Bible, and I I tell people at this point that the Bible gave us everything. It did not leave anything out. I can tell Sister Carlene about her sin. I can tell Brother Smith about his sin. The problem is, I forget to talk about mine. I, I'm, I'm, I forget to talk about mine, and I think. It's and um, would you say, Sister Jackie? I said the moat in the splinter. Yeah, it, well, he said, he said you got to remove the moat out of your own eye. So when you do that, you have to be able to do it. That's why I say we don't want to be. Uh, what I've learned is not to be. And 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 it, and it's a very hard, um, and you guys again jump in. It's very hard not to do, but I I don't judge anyone because I believe yes, brother brother Watkins. But that's that's why um, I know a lot of times people will come to you in church when they see when you look like Jesus to them, and they say, "I want to be like you." And you have to be willing to say to them, no, you don't want to be like me. You want to be like Jesus because I'm a sinner. And you have to be able to be honest and transparent and tell people that. Otherwise, when people, when you have new people, when they're babes in Christ and they're coming in, they're looking around to see who they can be like instead of looking at Christ and listening to the word and reading the word for themselves so they can grow in christ they're looking at humans and thinking oh they're perfect so we have to be willing to say okay well well jesus died for me because i'm a sinner and he died to take my sins (laughs) what that's why i always tell people now you i grew up with that and and if it didn't work oh hold on y'all i'm sorry if it didn't work, um, if it didn't work, then they wouldn't be able to make commercials on TV because you want to be like them on TV. So uh, it's one of those human attributes that we want to be like somebody and not be like yourself. What I tell them, um, Sister Watkins, I always tell them, baby, you don't want to have to go through what I went mm-hmm. through to get here. <laughs> you better go ahead and pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's why I don't want to be like nobody because it is. Oh, I want to be like TDJ, baby. I don't want to be. I don't want to be nothing like TDJ because I don't know what he got. I went through to get to where he was going. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and I'm just using him as an example. But that's anybody. I don't want to be like Dr. Bethea. I don't want to go through the things that went, the things that I know going through war. I don't want to go to war. I don't want to be have a bullet pass through my afro, even though I was just gray and it ain't an afro no more. I don't want to go through that to get where you at. No, sir. You know, it looks nice. God has truly blessed you. Tell me how I can get what, what it took to get there. That opens the door. Um, I think a friend of ours um, said that, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't um, force Christianity on people. However, if they crack the door, he going to step in. And that's the way we have to be. Um, one of the things, and I'm just saying that that, that was that question. And there's many more questions like that, um, that you can come across that you, that called you to do, you got to look at yourself first. 
you got to look at them. Yes, Sister Campbell. Yes, Sister Campbell. Yes, sir. I was going to wait for you to finish your sentence, but I was going to say that a, a lot of times when people are um, going through things, they often think they're the only ones that go, or that you don't understand, even as a counselor, you get that a lot where folks say like, you, you know, I don't think you understand what I'm going through because they're in there talking to you about their problem, but they don't understand. Like, like, you know, you've had people to die. You've had people, you know, to turn their back on you. You've been hurt. You might have not had some severe mental health issues that they had, but some of those everyday things, life be life and on everybody. A Woo! lot of times, not understanding. Yes, but but I've been through something. And a lot of times people will look at you and say, hey, you know, I want to be like you, but they don't understand what you went through and what you endured and all of the pain and suffering that you experienced to even get to the point where you are in, in, in their life that, at that moment. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and so you know and i didn't want to dwell on that because i had something else for you guys tonight too i wanted you to to think about but uh, you're absolutely correct and i know in, in you guys position you know you're thinking honey if you knew but it ain't about me <laughs> i hear you sister jackie it ain't about me this is your time but if you only knew um but you know the other thing with that sister campbell is that a lot of time if you're talking to people, you almost, it's a know the spirit by the spirit, try the spirit. You almost know, even when you say, honey, I don't think you would understand that even your response lets me know that you truly understand. That That's why, you know, we try to tell people, you know, I can't tell you about being homeless unless I've been homeless myself. I can tell you about it. I can't tell you, like you said, you can't have people, have people dying on you or you got a sick parent in the hospital, but you still got to go to work every day. You can't be there at their bedside. Or, you know, the, the, the new thing now is, um, which he's, he's, he's making me realize a lot of things, but the new thing is, I, I you know, to have, to be not even in the same country when your family needs you. You see what I'm saying? And they come and say, well, you don't know. I really miss my family. I really blah, blah. Uh, honey, I understand. A thousand miles away. A thousand miles away. And you can't get to them. And you can't help them. You helpless. But you know a man that you can get in their corner and pray to. Amen. I was going to say that. You, you, just, yeah. you know? You know? So... You, you know, and that, that cracks the door open. That cracks the door open and say, I, but I know a man. I know a man. A woman, you can say, but I know where I can go to get the help I need, even though I can't be there. Uh, I always want our students, because this is a wonderful class. Um, and as Doc said, you know, being on vacation, you know, you're having fun, but, you know, there was a purpose. Yes. Yes, Sister Roy. Um, I just witnessed that today, what you're saying. A uh, family member was going through something and the tears came down. You can hear it all through the phone. And like I said, you know who Jesus is and you know that you are a prayer warrior and you have other prayer warriors that can help you get a prayer through. So we prayed over the phone and I'm like, even though you, you're going through with this situation, God has got in control. So we did a lot of praying today. And I'll just piggyback on what you just said. It it it, it oh, does help. It really does ab help. Ab absolutely. And and the same thing as Dr. Blunt was saying, and and that's the reason we study the scripture. Um, you know, because every one of us in this classroom, every one of us can find ourselves in one of the, and I'm gonna say characters loosely, one of the characters in the Bible. You can find yourself in there, you know. Uh, you can find yourself in there. Um, the, the greatest one and, and the greatest example, like now, um, we were discussing, you know, people talking about the hurricane. I hope none of y'all are in Florida, by the way. Um, I just really do. Um, and it, all the nut cases are coming out. And, and, and understanding that no matter what they tell you, God has the final word. You know, there's a difference between being cautious and understanding, but understanding who's in control. Um, and that's outside of that. I'm sorry. I done got away from critical thinking, ain't it? Uh, my <laughs> no, you haven't. 
<laughs> okay. What you say, Sister Jackie? What you got? You raise your hand, Sister Jackie. I, yeah, I said no. Uh, no, you haven't. You haven't oh. gotten away from critical thinking because I was um because you made me think. <laughs> so you <laughs> talking about talking about the the hurricane, and I thought about um prayer. Like my sister was talking about, she was praying today, and all of the professors, all of you have taught us that how prayer changes things. How when Jesus when he was in the boat and the disciples went and woke him up and the storm was raging. And we have to believe that Jesus, he can, he can stop the hurricane because he created it. He could tell that hurricane, peace be still, if he wants to. If he wants to. So, but we have to pray and trust that God will do it. But if he don't, he's still God. And we may not know why, because because I'm learning in my life. I, I could pray. Well, I'm going to keep praying and, and sometime God will uh, give me a yes. Sometime he'll give you a no and sometime he'll give me a wait. But I'm learning to say, OK, Lord, let your will be done. No matter that, no matter yeah. how I feel about it. And, and that is the hardest thing. But wasn't there a fella in the and I, I'm again, I'm using that loosely because I'm learning not to be so straight laced with that wasn't there a fella in the bible that the angel was standing in the way trying to the angel was ready to, to we're gonna put up put it on him and uh yeah. he jumped out didn't he jump off the donkey and said if i had a sword i'd stab you right now <laughs> wasn't that and what, yeah, and what what the donkey say uh, why how come how <laughs> come you would do this thing have i ever caused you any harm mm -hmm. huh didn't he say that yeah that's okay, what he, then said. he said, he said what, what, how come has all these years, Jesus have Jesus. I ever did anything to you? And, yeah. the, and it said, and God opened his eyes and he could see the angel standing there with the flaming sword. My God. Huh? huh? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we too busy. Um, this was, this is my new thing. Y'all, y'all help me out with this. We're too busy looking at the problem and not looking at the solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not looking at this. We too busy looking at the uh, south. And I ain't gonna say that I, it was a fella that taught me this thing. That like, like, like Sister Campbell say, and I love that thing. And I know people say, well, you can't do life be life, and and it, it and it ain't that life is gonna change. It's how you gonna look at life. I didn't. How you gonna look at life? And and you just cannot. We as 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 saved, sanctified, and we know the Lord. You can't be, I call a sour Christian. You frowned up. Everything, how you doing? Hey, yeah, you start speaking in tongues and falling out in the flow. And then be, that ain't what I asked you. I asked you, how you doing? <laughs> you understand? And even in this, even in Asheville, and we're not far from that here in North Carolina, but even with that, you know, there are people, they, uh, we have to learn, we want to learn to attend to the physical needs as well as the spiritual need because a person that if you could look behind some people's smile you would realize that a smile is not always a smile now oh, one, yeah. now one of the things i asked you guys to look at was the peer report um and in that peer report if you looked at it as you sh as we asked you to now it wasn't something you had to some of the things you find is how many people believe in god but are depressed how many people call themselves Christians and want to do self harm? Mm -hmm. How many people that are Christian who have considered suicide? That was one of the things that I asked. I said, "Did you go go in and look at it and find something that you find is interesting to you?" Um, the percentage of people who have, have swayed away and then. Um, you you know, we use Christian so loosely, the word Christian so loosely versus Christ-like. Um, and, and we know those things change. They're, they're, they're not always interchangeable. You can be a Christian, but are you a follower of Christ? You see those types of questions that we 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 need to ask ourselves um sometimes, um, even in your thought process. 
um, and you you don't want to look at the everyday norm. Um, right now, I've, I've taught my wife this thing when we going through town and whatever. She's learning. She can spot it now. She said that's the herd mentality. Do you anybody? Did anybody go and look to find out what that was? Now that's the been in the army for thirty years. <laughs> I'm not messing with you. I'm not messing with you, Mister Ramago. Did anybody else? He he knows what it is. Did anybody else go in and look to see? Did you just type type it in? What mentality is that? I hear crickets. I hear crickets. Mr. Ramago. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, go, go I'm I'm gonna look it up, but while I'm looking it up, what it sounds like a herd mentality sounds mm -hmm. like um um everyone agreeing to one thing and, and everybody going one everybody go, uh, that everybody going the same way that a herd is going like following mm -hmm. the herd following the crowd that's what i think now i'm gonna look it up and see what it is go ahead because it, it pops it up it's an ai overview it gives you the first answer yes sister campbell yeah, your herd mentality is uh, the phenomenon. I said the phenomenon that describes the tendency of people to con conform to beliefs and behaviors of a group rather than acting as individuals. And I give you a perfect example of this. I witnessed this week. Go ahead with it. I'm listening. People inside of Sam's and all these grocery stores buying all this toilet paper, right? This this hoarding toilet paper because they're saying oh, there's going to be a strike at the ports. But the thing about that is the ports was for international. Right. So toilet paper won't affect it at all because toilet paper made in the United States. So people was watching other people get toilet paper. So they all went and got toilet paper, not knowing that the strikes didn't have anything to do with toilet paper. That's just stuff from coming overseas. So their mm -hmm. herd mentality makes people just when one person do something, everybody go do it. Mm -hmm. They did that here with the food and water recently. <laughs> oh. And a lot of times, sometimes <laughs> the media will just throw stuff out there to make you go spend your money and they just be lying about stuff sister mckeady oh. just made the point i was about to say the herd mentality stems from an alert something has to spark the herd or make the herd unstable for that one person to make the rest of the herd unstable and everyone's gone so someone has to be the same person in the herd that's why god only made chester ramico jr and my daddy <laughs> senior I'm about to beat my own drum. God knows you do. Um, <laughs> but that that's it. And I love that, Sister Campbell. You're absolutely right. I got you, Sister Jackie. That's the thing. The man the, 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 is a, a psychological phenomenon that causes people to follow what everybody else is doing. They playing music in church. Where everybody else going to have a two-hour music session in church and ain't nobody got no word. They um you you know they they it, it those things are phenomenal. Everybody can't be a mega church. Everybody can't be the biggest church on the block. Everybody, the individual Christ said the individual is the church. You the church. What we want to teach you is to not follow the normal. Jesus did not follow the normal. What did they say when he was they were walking through the cornfield in the end of and the uh and and his and his and his group? I'm gonna say his group started eating the corn and it was sunday he said don't worry about the hands being filthy worry about your filthy heart okay what did he say about the man that loses 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 it loses a sheep on sunday and he said you're gonna let it stand a hole or you're gonna go get it out <laughs> that and that that we have we here and doc you you hear what i'm saying this at bti want you to be what farmer having a hundred sheep loses one does not leave the 99 to find the one so it ain't how many people you run into yeah perfect thank you how many people you run into but do you help the one that you run across we don't want you to be conformed to oh well you got 99 persons in your faith that person still needs christ you got 99 sins in your life so why who are you didn't didn't God God Himself ask Job what? Somebody tell me what God asked. God asked Job Himself yes, where He was when He created the world. 
No, no, that ain't the first question he asked. What's the he asked him, but what was the first question he asked? Who, Who are, are you? you? You. Who are you? Yeah. That's the question we need to ask ourselves every day. Then he told him, "Who were you? Where were you when I hung the stars and named them one by one?" Great. Do do we always do that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Ramago, do we always do that? Uh, unequivocally, no. Say <laughs> unequivocally, absolutely. Let me see some of some of these silent folks in this classroom. Hold on a second. Dr. Naughty, you still there? No, nope, he's not still there. Let me see. Brother Smith is interacting. Let me see who else in there. Mr. Nelson, you there? Mr. Nelson? No, we ain't got no action from him. Let me go over here. Brother Watkins, you there? Yes, sir, I'm here, Dr. Williams. How are you, sir? You, you interacted, I, I, and I, I like to use people where they at. Brother Watkins, mm -hmm. if y'all don't know it or not. No, I'm just I'm just calling to make sure you were there. God, when I talk about folks, I want them there so they don't, don't misunderstand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Brother Watkins. If nobody else understood where he was at during graduation, I understood where he was at. You feel me? You understand what I'm saying? When, when you already know, ain't got to say a word, you already know. <laughs> you, know <laughs> you already know. Mm -hmm. You already know. That, 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 that's how you, you know those, those spirits, those things that are around you. Um, and, and, and your work will show. Your work will show. I said all of that to say this. Uh, and it, it's not a fuss. It's not an argument. It, it's not. It's not any of that. We are going to always at this time. We are in a time where there's more hurricane. Um, you know, even if they're saying this one is is going to be stronger than Wilma. You know, the uh, the pressure and the amount of destruction. Um, you know, we already know it. Helen wasn't no joke. But the problem with Helen was. People tried to predict what God was going to do and say it was mm -hmm. going to go further west and was not prepared for it when it hit Asheville and Blue Ridge Mountains and blowing. They didn't have no clue. It, But the example is that they didn't have no clue. The problem was that Noah had told them that it was going to rain. So he was building an ark and they laughed at him. Mm -hmm. They're going to laugh at y'all. I just wanted to let you see you with their brother Watkins. Because mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. That did my heart good. But they, 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 you're not going to be the normal. Once you come to the realization, you're not going to, people are automatically going to see that you're not like the rest. <laughs> they, they're just already going to know it. <laughs> you ain't going to have to tell them a thing. They're going to know you're not like the rest. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to be able, because you're going to be able to accept people where they are and as they are for who they are. Okay, that's the thing that we want to do. Always remember, and I said all of that because some did not read the question. The question was, why did he die for me? And every time you say me, you got to look at yourself. I know why he died for the people. I know why he died for the world. I know why he came for the people. I know why he came for the world. But why did he do it for me? Because he already knew. Lord, why ain't I like the rest of the people? Because who he knew, he what? Lord, is my class not got no scripture nowhere? He predestinated. Okay. Amen. Is everybody there? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I just All right, well, y'all somebody else a chance to speak. I, I know. Well, you jump in there. You jump in there when the question like that because that's not making me feel maybe we need to stop critical thinking and go to some critical scripture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joshua one five. Well, that because them some things that you got that are embedded in our society. Now, this is my question for tonight. 
and we got we got a few minutes. I ain't gonna belabor it long. This country was founded on what? Anybody? What was this country founded on? Greed. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Okay, let me change it. What well, did religious they... freedom, right? Religious right? freedom. Religious freedom. <laughs> religious freedom. <laughs> uh, we know what happened. That's just the country was found. America mm -hmm. was found on uh, uh, Philos love. Philos. Philos. And what is that, Dr. Nordy? Their Dr. Nordy is. What was that, sir? <laughs> Philos mm -hmm. love is friendship love. Friendship. They Not are absolutely. Yeah. Only what, friendship and, and, there you go. And Dr. Nordy, what, what does God call us to do? To, to have the agape love. love. Mm -hmm. To love. And do we all know what agape look? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just sitting here, got comfortable, didn't I? Um, <laughs> we know what agape Okay, so we know all types of uh, we know all types of love. And what should each one of you? And so it, God called each one of us to have agape love. Okay, and that's the front. Thank you very much. The other question is. God gave um, different positions in the body of Christ. All work together for the good. We know that he gave us a commission. The greatest commission was love. But what is the greatest position that he gave? A servant. 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 Yeah. Servant. Well, he's not. Well, no, can't be servant because he said, "I no longer call you servant; I call you friend." Friend. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can call you. Yeah, so, that's true. But he said he gave some apostles, oh, some preachers. Some preachers. Mm -hmm. Which one of those wow. positions? Which mm -hmm. one of those positions would you consider the greatest? A teacher. Yeah, a teacher. Well, who who said teacher? Who said I teacher? Did. I did. Absolutely. Why you say mm -hmm. teacher? Because without the teacher knowing what we are supposed to represent, we'll get out and represent what we want to. We we're not going to lead. We we're not going to be leading them, the people, the right way if we don't know the word. It's got to be taught. We have to be taught these things, and it has to follow the word. Oh, all just right. sit a little bit and then just add on to it, or I'll take that part out because I don't like it, and I can get more people over here. And we are accountable. We are. The, the, hey, the blood is the blood will be on our hands. Let's put oh, it that, that right there, right there That's is what I'm it. looking for. Now, do we all? Do, uh, anybody disagree with what she just said? Because all of you are teachers. I agree. It, every time you get a bit more knowledge of something that you did, that's it. That one that you didn't understand now you're responsible to go out and 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 to teach that information mm -hmm. to teach that information so do you understand do you all agree don't don't later talk about well i ain't agree with what he said i he said apostle was the great now, I, 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 do you not agree do you agree or disagree that, that's that's what we agree, agree. I, 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 I agree teacher I agree because that most of the time the teachers inspired you, they motivate you, and then they encourage you to be in your maximum, I mean, to put in your maximum effort to be where you have to be. All right, Sister Clara. Oh, Sister Clara. Yeah, all right. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. Well, oh, yes, Dr. Naughty. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 talks about study to show thyself approved unto God, the mm -hmm. workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word mm -hmm. of truth. So how can you rightly divide the word of God if you are not taught? Mm -hmm. Somebody <laughs> might be teaching you. A lack of knowledge, <laughs> uh, my people perish. Lack of lack knowledge. Of knowledge. So how do you get knowledge? God will not come down from heaven to come and he place people as teachers to teach over there. 
So uh, I look at uh, Paul, he wrote to Timothy. He said, God will not come and give you nothing. Listen people in church take the old people folks as your the man as your father the woman as your mom and then the youth as your brothers and sisters mm. and then he should never forget what layers his grandmother taught him paul did not say what the holy spirit taught him <laughs> he did not say holy spirit he said what your grandma taught you so there must be a teacher and the first school the whole earth is the house is your mm. home that's the first school amen absolutely amen all right dr nord he crumped the night ain't he y'all um thank you very much sister clara that is him i want y'all to understand that yes sister jackie if 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 we don't teach first then the preacher can't preach if he don't if he don't study the word then he can't preach the word so you have to teaching is the most important um gift that god gives right. us. Oh, because right. you can tell that and i'll just give an example um with the polis he was he was uh preaching but priscilla and aquila taught him even the more so he could study even the more and taught him taught him more so he could be more knowledgeable about the word of god so uh teaching is the most important one and i agree with sister anderson and uh, the reason we say that is that we want you to understand that each one of you guys are teachers you uh, whether anybody give it is not what man says it's what god said because <laughs> you have the ability now and as he also asked the question i'm getting ready to cut it off that what man having a candle, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not quoting that correctly, would hide it under a bush. It is not knowledge that you gather unto yourself. Okay, it's not knowledge that gathers under, your, that under yourself. It's for you to go out in the world and do it. So if we ask you to do something and you don't do it, Are you a good teacher? Because in order to be a good teacher, you have first have to been a good student. Um, I say that because Dr. Bethea, that he way lenient than he was when the school first started. Um, however, I did catch a whiff the other day that yeah, yeah, I told y'all in the beginning, if we ask you just like this one, it was a trick question. Some of you actually went back and read the question. Some of you did not. Some of you almost got there. Some of you did not. Um, one of the things, and I'm going to wrap this up in three minutes. One of the things is we always say, if you can't reach us by phone, I think all of us have Google Class on our thing. Put a question in there. Go to your classroom. Hey. Can you call me? It's going to pop up on everybody's phone, but it's going to reach the person you're trying to reach if you truly do not understand it. Um, we have to do a retrospect. Um, and Doc, looking at, at, at what tonight, um, we, I, we may have to switch and go to some basic scripture. Um, because I'm not a, 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 a person that can remember, you know, every scripture. You know, John, uh, Timothy 2, 15, John 3 and 6. I, I'm not a person that can that can remember that. But there are some basic scriptures that we all should know. Because it's the foundation. I, and I'm going to put that to you. What is the basic scripture used as a foundation of Christianity? Y'all better write it down. That is the question. You will see it in the Google Classroom posted no later than tomorrow afternoon. But you can work on it. It is not all I'm going to do is put it in the general chat. However, you will start deducting 10 points every time we ask that question and you can't answer it. 
Because if you can't answer a basic question, I would dare not ask you a major question. Okay, that that's it. Can, can you um, repeat that again? Repeat the question, please. Can you repeat it again, please? What is the basic? What is the basic? Um, let me get it. Okay. Put a scripture used in Christianity. That every matter of fact, if you want to put a list, the foundation. Yeah. The foundation of scripture for Christianity. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. It's John 3.16. See, look how fast Sister Atkins answered that question. So what is what? the basic scripture used in the foundation of Christianity? Yes, ma'am. And she said, yeah, give me a basic scripture. What did you say? What is it, Sister Atkins? John 3.16. And what is that? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. That was my guess as well. Look at that. Look at that. You see how fast he is? That, that is the foundation of scripture. It wasn't no really thought. That's why I said I can't quit it the great because it's one everybody should know. All right. You will get an assignment. It will be a lot more thought provoking than that. Um, if you do not have the Pew research, you'll probably want to get it and save it. Um, Dr. Bethea. Um, Thank you. Thank yes, you. sir. Dr. Bethea, I'm going to give you, I'm turning you over to Dr. Bethea. Um, I will give you an assignment. Um, are y'all finding any of this stuff too heavy? Right now, I know what season we in. Um, real quick, Doc, is anybody finding it to be a too much? I'm I'm not finding it too heavy, but um, so we have a lot of homework every week, which is um. Do I give y'all a lot of homework? Well, to me, we're having a lot of homework every week, which and we have to do our papers. So you know me, I'm trying to shorten stuff because you know how you okay. be talking, Jackie. Don't be writing all that. So I have to. Yeah. To, to like even this time with the paper, I'm like, I had to try to not because I'm to shorten stuff, Sister you know. Jackie, because I Sister fit Jackie, into it. Sister Jackie, Sister Jackie, yes. when class yes. is over, you call me. I ain't gonna put this out there, but I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. All I'm right. gonna tell you something real quick because if you feel like that, there's a reason you feel like that, and there's a reason I do that. But I'm gonna tell you the reason, so that way you won't have to think about it and you'll be more relaxed. How about that? Call matter of fact, where's my phone at? Okay, yeah. Call me after class. Okay. I'm gonna give you the answer to that question. All, All right. right, all right. Well, Doc, there you go, buddy. There you go. Y'all have a wonderful I love each and every one of y'all. I'm gonna let Dr. Bethel have it for some final words, and we're gonna let y'all enjoy the rest of your evening. Go ahead, Dr. Bethel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh um, welcome back and glad you enjoyed you and your wife enjoyed your vacation well and deserved new and a new grandbaby all right new grandbaby that's congratulations. right congratulations okay Thank congratulations you. grand congratulations. granddad okay um we have um for those students that um uh, uh, doing the first year Hebrew, that is tomorrow night and Friday night. There's been an amendment to the the lineup, as you well know, Dr. Uh, Green on Fridays is dealing with the, the prophets. So you are required to have those two hours of Hebrew. So you'll have Hebrew that Friday and then the other hour will be coming on Wednesday. So tomorrow we will be holding our Hebrew class. Why Hebrew? Why why is so important about Hebrew? Ladies and gentlemen, you, you often hear me say you need to know the historical fact behind anything, anything. Even the scripture we study, we must know the historical factors of it behind it who it was addressed to 
And this is why it's so important that we uh, keep up with our Hebrew. And for those that want to sit in, you're welcome to sit in too. They want a refresher or keep you active in your Hebrew studies. Uh, uh, we're going to be dealing with a particular uh, question in a few days. Uh, but I'll tell you what it's about now. It's, it's what happens after death. That's what I want to talk about. It's a bit of open form or discussion. Be, be ready to prepare to give some answers. What happens after death? And when we, I ask a question like that, or matter of fact, uh, prayerfully, that any instructor asks a particular question, let's keep it into a biblical format. Let's uh, let's keep it what the Bible has to say about a particular question, because this is a spiritual school. It's a Bible college, Bible. So we want everything that, that we are discussing and talk about to relate to something this the Bible related. If you cannot be supported by scripture, then we we we, we it's just we classify that as secular. But that particular question is uh that I, I do want to deal with there's a lot of controversy about what happens after death. A lot of times within the Christian faith there is a significant amount of confusion regarding this particular subject. So we want to look at it because as Dr. Williams said, you all are teachers. Teachers, teachers, <laughs> teachers, teachers, where you're teaching in a format. And you students that are in this particular class now, uh, let's say you're not babes. You give babe milk. We're into the meat. We're into the meat of things. So what that means, that means that we look at God's word with boldness and we deliver it with boldness so because we are responsible for everything that comes out of this mouth or that mouth so we we want to speak the articles of god because when you speak to someone uh about the goodness of god and how he has delivered you i know there's some stories in here there's some stories and I do want to rebuke the adversary because he has literally, again, uh, launched his, his attack upon the class, uh, this school. And But you learning the truth, when you learn the truth from God's word, the scripturally supported, man, that is awesome. Awesome. Um, so just be prepared to talk about that. This is not a real an assignment that I'm talking about. It's something I want to create a form and I want some input in reference to it and something to think about. What happens after death? Okay, that's all I have. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, Amen. That's a good one, Doc. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I just asked that... Um, I'm asking for prayer for my family as we bury my brother on this Friday. Oh, mm. yes. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. God. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Amen. yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, Sister Atkins, can you pray us out, please? Yes. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We just come to you just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for this class thank tonight. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, we Lord. thank you for all the students, Father God. Father God, yes, we just Lord. thank you for the word that was taught there, Lord. We thank you for all the participants, Father God. We just thank you for yes, you. Jesus. Because it wasn't for you, Father, we would not be here. And we would not be learning your word. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, continue to implant us and instill us with your word, dear Lord. Give us and lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. Now, My Father, God. we pray for Sister Callings of family dear lord in the passing of her brother dear lord 
We pray, yes, Father Lord. God, that you just touch them and keep them and strengthen them. Let them know that you are God, Father God, and that they can mm. always lean on you. Then, dear Lord, yes, we, Lord. Um, pray for Brother um, Michael, Father God, who's going to be going yes. into yes, the Father God. We pray, yes, Father Lord. God, that you My be God. with the physicians. We be with the medicine, Father God, that's going to be going into mm. his body, dear Lord. Be with mm. his wife, who's going to be the caregiver after he come out of yes, the surgery. Lord. Thank you. Father God, we already know that everything is all okay father god in the name of jesus father god and then we don't want to forget jackie's um um, like Eden's husband, Father God. Yes, Lord. We know, Father God, that he was ill, Father God, but thank God she's back mm. online with us tonight, dear Lord. Yes, so, Father Lord. God, we just pray that you just touch his body and continue to heal him in the name of yes, Jesus. Lord. In the name Father of God, Jesus. Anybody yes, else, Father God. God, that I forgot, dear Lord, Father God, just touch them and heal them, whatever they yes, need. Jesus. Don't forget about the Florida, Florida, the people, dear Lord, that's going through these storms, yes, Father Jesus. God. Yes, Lord. We know yes, that yes, everything God. is in your hand and everything is in your control yes. so father god we just depend on you and we lean on you for everything so Thank father lord. god we just as we leave this line dear lord we pray for each and every one of us for our family Thank father you. god for our relatives dear lord father god just continue to mm. be with us and keep us in jesus name amen 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 all right what was it a boy or girl a girl She's so tiny. Okay. Uh, okay. So tiny. Okay. It was a girl. Uh, send, send me Jameer's number. I will. Yes, sir. Okay. All, All right. right. All right, then. All right, then. Good night. Lalatov. 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 Lalat